In this lesson, we're going to actually be graphing linear equations. So instead of being given the graph and having to write the equation, we're now going to be given the equation and have to graph the line. Our first problem is y equals half x plus 4. So we're going to graph this line. The first thing you want to do is decide what form we were given this line in. And hopefully you're recognizing that this is actually given to us in slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. So right here is where my m is. So I can tell you that the slope of this line is 1 half. And the y-intercept, the b value, is 4. This is how you are used to graphing lines. You have hopefully graphed hundreds of lines from slope-intercept form in Algebra 1 or Intermediate Algebra. So I would start where we always start our graph is at the y-intercept. So I would go to, at the y-axis, I'm going to find where 4 is. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where I start. Then I move with my slope. My slope is rise over run, so 1 over 2. I would rise 1 and run 2. Rise 1, run 2. If I wanted to go down, I would have to go down 1 and left 2, making both negative moves. You can think of it as negative 1 over negative 2, because if I was going to simplify that fraction, it would still equal a half. So down 1, left 2. Connect the dots, and I have my first line. Now, I think it takes three points to make a line when you're graphing on paper, so I need to see three of these dots. I do not need to see all six that I have up there right now. And then you can connect them. So that's one from slope-intercept form. Number six, you will see, is in, hopefully recognized, point-slope form. So they have given us point-slope form. Some of you like to graph from slope-intercept. So if you want to change this to slope-intercept form and graph it, you may. I'm going to, however, teach you how to graph it from the forms you're given. So from this form, I can tell you that the form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? So I can tell you the slope for your line is 2, and I can give you the, a specific point. x1, y1 is a specific point on your line. So x1 would be negative 1, because again, to change that to a positive, you would have to substitute a negative and y1 would be 5. So I know when I'm graphing that negative 1, 5 is a point on my line. So just like when I'm given this um, y-intercept and I start at that b value, if I'm given a point, I can start there with my slope also. So my slope is 2, which if I was going to write as a fraction would be 2 over 1, or you can think of it as negative 2 over negative 1. Both ways work for graphing. So if I'm looking at starting at my point right here, and I want to go up 2 over 1, I'm off the graph, aren't I? I can estimate, maybe right there, but I'm off the graph. So I probably want to go down. Down 2, left 1. Down 2, left 1. Down 2, left 1. I can go all the way through my graph, but again, I only need three points to make a line for my homework. I'm not using a straight edge, so excuse me here. Hopefully you use a ruler from your planner. That would work good for that. And there's my line. Since I'm only putting one line in a graph, I'm not going to require you to label them because it's very specific. I gave you one. You're going to graph one. When we put more than one line in a graph is when we're going to have to label. So that's an example of graphing from point slope form. The last form that we haven't seen yet then is standard form. Look at number seven, standard form. So x plus y equals number. To graph from standard form, you probably did this in intermediate algebra, um, but not often, so you're not very good at this. So if you want to move it to slope-intercept form and graph it, by all means, if that works for you, do it. I'm going to teach you, however, how to graph from standard form. And how we graph from standard form is finding the intercepts. We find the x-intercept and we find the y-intercept. In order to find the x-intercept, so where the graph crosses the x-axis, I plug in 0 for y. So for x-intercept, I plug in y equals 0. So I'm going to take my original problem, and where the y is, I'm going to put a 0. And then when I solve that equation, I actually have 3x equals 9, divided by 3, x equals 3. And if you can do this in your head, I'm okay with that. I don't need to see this work if you're doing this in your head. So my x-intercept would be 3, 0. Then I have to find my y-intercept. To find your y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x. 
And the reason for that, think about, let me just graph the one we just did to show you. 3, 0 is right here. The reason I plugged in 0 for y is because no matter which point I picked on the x-axis, what's y always going to be? It's always going to be 0. So that's why when you're talking about an x-intercept, you can plug in 0 for y. The same goes for a y-intercept. No matter, I know a y-intercept has to be on the line. No matter which point it is, my y value is going to be 0. So I can plug in 0 for that, and I'll find my y-intercept. So to do that now, I take my same equation, 3x minus y equals 9, and where the x is, I will plug in a 0. So I end up with 3 times 0 minus y equals 9, which is really negative y equals 9. I need to have y, though, positive y. So I divide by negative 1, and I find that y equals negative 9. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 9. Of course, my graph doesn't fit that. Look at that. And that happens sometimes. You can't always have your graphs be perfect. So it's down here. 0, negative 9. Now, this is the only type of problem I will let you only have two points to connect. And so I'm going to connect the dots on here. You will use a straight edge. And there's my line. That's how you graph from standard form. Now, you will notice that you have three more problems on this sheet. You will do those tomorrow in class. We will do them. But I would like you to try them tonight at home. See how far you can get on them, and then tomorrow I'll flash the answers up and you can see if you did them right, and if you didn't, we'll go through those.